because I am a city councillor for my students these days. Uh, but the reason I got myself into doing that is I used to run a venue in the city, which uh, some of you will be aware of, called The Cellars. Yay! Uh, and was played many times, and Robbie's played probably more times than he cares to remember. Um, and uh, when that was going to close, because of the nature of the market, we decided um, to um, all go off and do new things. Uh, most of the team are still working in the music industry in one way or another, either teaching or uh, doing production on live sound or actually playing in bands, which is brilliant. Uh, and I wanted to find a route back into still doing stuff that involves uh, music and cultural activity. And I decided to do that through politics because I often take uh, 180 degree turns in my life. Uh, but I still do uh, quite a lot in and around music uh, periodically uh, when I can find the time. And one of the things that I do is go around to colleges around the south of England uh, and talk to people about my experiences of being in the music industry. Uh, and so I'm not going to talk to you very long today because it's sort of an extra slot, but there's a couple of key messages that I wanted to try and get across to you that I've learned from spending 20 odd years in the music business and 30 odd years as a theatre director uh, in parallel, incidentally, not consecutively, I'm not that old. Um, and it's about, actually, I thought what I'd do is use the reference points of some of the people who are in the room. So Robbie here, uh, and Amber, and Charlie. Uh, and Nick up the back and other people in the room who still are involved in one way or another in the music business after many, many years, or not very many years at all in this case. Um, <laughs> this is far too young for that. But the, the message I want to get over to you is, it's not about fame. Fame is the little bit that may or may not happen if you get lucky, because luck is everything in music. All of the people with all of the talent never got famous, apart from a tiny, tiny little percentage of them. You are not less talented than famous people if you don't become famous. You just didn't get lucky. But don't let that stop you loving music, okay? So if you got into this because you're passionate about it, you enjoy it, you always will. So Robbie, as an example, uh, is still teaching uh, and, and loving doing that. He is still producing, for his scenes. Uh, he's played in good, uh, a 60s band that I can remember, a rock band. He used to be a staple of our jam sessions on Monday night. He's still playing for the punk pair of Pirates now with Dave Pump Marsh, who hits the drums harder than any other living human being. Drummer. The half naked <laughs> drummer. Uh, it is the top half, incidentally, in case anybody wants it. And uh, so he's still out there doing that. Uh, and has played in a, the I know of a 60s band, a sort of Prog bands and originals band, all sorts of different things. Uh, Amber's done more session work than uh, I could probably list in the next hour to two hours, as well as running uh, a vocal, vocal group and uh, doing mentoring days like this and those sort of things. Uh, Charlie came completely left field from an entirely different industry, uh, but his passion for music shone through and he's found a way to still do it now. Nick runs a record shop, but he also puts on loads of gigs and does stuff all over the place. So the message is, if the fame bit doesn't come, please don't stop being engaged with music because what it does is that feeling will always be there. It's not something that goes away. Don't let people think, oh, you know, you've got to 25, 26, it's not gonna happen, I'll, I'll ditch that now. I know so many people who've done that. If you want to find a way to carry on engaging in the music business, when you've decided, okay, I'm not gonna be a pop star, that doesn't mean you can't still find a career in music. So whatever things happen over the next few years, if you young and you're aspiring and you want to get out there by all means keep living the dream for as long as you possibly can but don't give up on the dream and think the dream was about fame it's not these guys are still doing it as well as being a city councillor i've just spent the last two weeks directing a play rehearsing it in a pub putting it on the square tower with a group of they're all professional actors uh, but they are what we in the theatre business call resting <laughs> i.e they haven't got any paid work at the moment so when they're in Portsmouth and we know we're going to have them, we see who's around, we grab a group of people and we put on a show. Uh, and we do a profit share out of it. And we all earn about 60 or 70 quid, but we do it because we love it. And then various people amongst that group will go off and do panto seasons or stints in the West End. You know, they find other, there's always a way to enjoy your talent without it just being about fame. So please never let go of that because apart from anything else, if you keep doing that, you've got that to pass on to the next generation too. So old farts like me, who's nearly 50, I'm still finding ways to engage in the music business and do things. Uh, a little comedy story for you last night. Uh, because we ended up running the city council in May rather unexpectedly, um, and I became deputy leader, I've been a bit busy. So I booked a gig, because I still do uh, promote shows occasionally, up in London, which was last night, uh, and I forgot about it. So 
Okay. Very important to look for the promoter to forget about a gig, but I completely forgot. Luckily, the, the band's agent is a personal friend of mine, and he phoned me up on Tuesday and said, Steve, you've got Charlie Crisis at the borderline on Saturday. Could you advance the show, please? And my stomach hit the floor, because I thought, okay, it's their first album that they were going to do. It's a whole album performance show. It's a big deal to them. It's their London gig. It's 300 tickets needed to sell out to make it work. I don't even know if it sold two tickets. Fortunately, it sold out, and I've made money as I have made. Um, but well yeah, <laughs> just a bit of luck along the way. Um, that is absolutely not how anybody should ever promote the gig. It's the antithesis <laughs> of that, and something I spend an awful lot of time going around uh, talking to students and, uh, and bands and saying is what not what you do. So the antithesis of that is to always put in the effort and make sure that you do what you do well. Takeaway lessons for me, having worked with hundreds of different musicians over the years, is always be honest, most importantly with yourself, but very importantly with everyone else. This industry has one degree of separation. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody. So if you tell Fibs and you say, I'm gonna bring 50 people to that show, I promise you, I promise you that if you turn up with the ticket still in the envelope, Everyone else who puts on gigs in the area is going to know. So just be honest and say, yeah, I'd love to play, but I don't think I'm going to be able to bring anybody. And then find your own route in. It's not about bigging yourself up and over-egging uh, the, the recipe. It's about making sure you've got balance. So always be honest with people and demand that they're honest with you. You know, if somebody says, oh, I'll put you for that gig, there's going to be 500 people in the room, and you get there and there's 10 people, don't work with that person again. No, because that's pointless. They've made you a promise. So if you lie to them and they lie to you, stay out of that equation, it ain't worth going there. The other thing is, if you're getting that bit of luck and things are starting to happen, don't get sucked into people who promise you something that they can't deliver. The internet's there for a reason, do some research. If they're saying, if you sign this with me, then I will make sure that you are on Channel 4 next week, do blah, 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 but sign your name away here. Never, ever, ever do that. If nobody would ask you to do that these days, the, the agreement that you sign should be very light touch. And the most important thing, if you're a songwriter, never, ever sign away your publishing. I've worked with artists who back in the day, 30, 40 years ago, signed what were then known as in perpetuity agreements, which means that their songs that they wrote, that you would still hear on the radio, that would have millions of plays still online because they're iconic songs, they get next to nothing for them because some greedy record label at the time got them to sign the wrong agreement. So keep the publishing stuff for you. If you want to sign a management deal, that's that's in you know, a, a different kettle of fish. But it shouldn't be that you're completely locked into that. I, I know big, big producers and guys up in London. I know big management <coughs> companies. I've sat in the, you know, the, the biggest exec offices up there with other people. They don't get asked to do those things. So you shouldn't get asked that either. Check out the person's credentials. They want your talent. Make sure they've got some talent to give you in return. Because otherwise, you're just being mugged off, and that's not fair. So it's just a few little bullet points. I do all sorts of these things around all, all over the place all the time. But the important thing is, please keep engaging with people like Charlie and Amber and Robbie here, and people who genuinely care about you, want to help you get along the way. Pick up their little nuggets of wisdom, because they're absolutely invaluable. 